Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from Olaf Road. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's video is a follow-up of my Red Arc DC-DC review I did a little while ago. In that video, I was actually provided incorrect information from Red Arc and uh, therefore I make an incorrect statement how the boost charge cycles work in the Red Arc BC-DC range. In this video, I will explain what was incorrectly stated. I will explain the ramifications of that and um, I will also tell you about a new firmware version I'm currently uh, testing for Red Arc, which will um, alleviate that problem at least for live PO4 lithium users. Yeah, for full disclosure, this is not a paid uh, video from Red Arc. As a matter of fact, I never received a cent from Red Arc for anything. However, Red Arc is kind enough from time to time to provide me products. I'm doing this video mainly for selfish reasons because I have a Red Arc BCDC 1250D in my camper trailer. I have used Red Arc BCDCs before in my vehicle builds and I also intend to install one in my uh, new Hilux build. So it is my personal interest to get to the bottom of that issue and I thought I share that with you. If you think you can do a better job or it is not scientific enough for you, please feel free to make a better video and explain it better. I'm no expert in this area. I just uh, explained you here my findings and give you my take on it. So let's get into it. Let me quickly show you what I said in the previous video in regards to the boost charge limit and how it could be easily circumvented. One thing to take into account, especially if you have bigger battery banks, if um, you select the Live PO4 profile, the charger will only provide uh, 50 amp in boost mode for two hours. After that, it will go into absorption and then into float for a maximum of four hours. However, there is an easy work around this. If there is any interruption of supply and the vehicle or solar input is turned on and off again, the unit will reset itself and the two hour boost begins again. For example, after two hours driving, you have your rest stop, you turn your engine on and off again and the boost charge time limit will reset. Let me now clarify what is actually correct. You definitely have a two hour boost charge limit and that applies to every battery profile. What was incorrect though is that you can easily circumvent the boost charge time limit by just restarting the car. As a matter of fact, to reset the charger and restart the boost cycle, you would need to disconnect and then reconnect all load and supply. And that uh, is really not possible. It means you have to completely disconnect the charger for a little while, then reconnect everything. One other thing I wasn't aware of at the time, and I reckon is quite important, is that when the battery charger goes into float or absorption mode, it will actually not provide enough charge to cover any load. So if the charger goes into absorption or float mode while you are driving and you have load on the battery, for instance, uh, you have a fridge running, you're charging devices while driving, the BCDC charger may not compensate for the load, even though your battery may drain while you are assuming that at least the loads are covered. That is certainly something I did not expect the BCDC to do and I could not find any information about it anywhere in the manual. So you may wonder how I got to the bottom of it because uh, it really was not easy. I'm on this issue for nearly a year, but originally the answers I was provided um, were not really satisfying. I could never get anything in writing. I was always told there would be an article uh, on the Red Arc blog, but I've never seen that article. So after my last video, I had people contacting me again that I was incorrect with a, with a boost charge limit and that it could be easily reset. So this time then I decided to take a little bit different route and I didn't go through my usual technical channels, but I went actually straight to the top. So I contacted Anthony Kittle, which is I think the, the head of Red Arc here in Australia. But surprisingly, he actually got back to me uh, within a short amount of time. And uh, that was really when I started to get some clarity where I got uh, direct answers to my questions. 
As part of my discussion with Anthony, he also asked me what I would like to see in the Charter and what changes I would suggest. And surprisingly, he asked me whether I would be interested to uh, test um, a prototype Red Arc BCDC 1250 with a changed uh, charge profile for lithium, uh, which would include my suggestions. So let me quickly run you through the changes of the lithium charge profile, which Red Arc has done and which hopefully will get released uh, to all the Red Arc chargers in the near future. I should mention though, this only applies to the lithium profile and not to AGM. Oh, that's a 1250D. Uh, I have already the camper trailer in the car. But the old uh, 1250D has not an issue, it has Red Arc calls it a feature. It will only charge a battery in bulk charge for two hours and then it goes through the whole charge cycle. So absorption five, and float. Five, yeah. So it means if you have say a 200 amp hour battery, instead of taking four hours to charge, it probably takes 8 or 10 or 12 hours to charge, which it's no issue for a majority of people because I reckon most people have a 100 amp hour battery in the car when they use it. That or they're not pulling their 200 amp hour bank down, down to correct. Yeah, using yeah. the whole usable. But power. it is something to be aware of and I flag that with Red Arc because for the camper trailer, for example, I don't want to have it. I have a 150 amp hour battery in there and I want to know if that is empty and I'm driving for three hours that and, that battery is full you and know? also with you with particular in particular your camper limited solar input so yes you've got no fixed panels yeah. to re, to replenish you, if you don't plug in a, a blanket to keep that battery topped up you want to know that you're charging that battery as you're driving for three four hours up to 100 percent standard yes. charge so Red Arc, to their credit though, I mean, they were receptive. I uh, spoke to Anthony Kittle there and they sent me now a new unit. They asked about my input. I also had obviously a chat with Joe here about what we think the chargers should have because in the old days with AGM and so on, that probably was more relevant. Yeah. Uh, but now with lithium, I think, yeah, that, that's not a good feature for lithium. And they sent me a new charger with a, a different software in it and we're currently testing that. Because this now extends the time the charger will stay in bulk charge mode from 2 to 4 hours. Then it goes for 20 minutes into absorption and float mode. And if after that the battery still accepts charge, it will 20 go minutes. back for 4 hours into bulk charge mode and so on. That means now you should be able to charge even bigger battery banks in yeah in how you want it yeah um, yeah we're testing that now first on the bench hopefully that works with our setup but then it goes in the camper trailer and i test it there again as well are. yes we have two victron 30 and battery chargers in supply mode the new red arc bcdc 1250 and two 100 amp hour dcs lithium batteries so guys 11 21 we started at 9 14 so we well two hours in we still get 41 amps in um, the temperature of the unit is without the fan now we switch the fan off again it's 55 degrees uh, we still get 41 amps in and it has not gone into float mode or absorption mode so that's exactly what i want to see Unfortunately, I can't really test what happens after four hours because we just don't have a sufficient battery bank for that. Um, but yeah, it's certainly, yeah, more than happy now to get that uh, BCDC charger into my camper trailer, which uh, Joe from JS will do. So I think I'm gonna end that now here, switch it off. We have 11.49. So we two hours and 40 minutes um, in bulk charge mode and yeah.
one thing to keep in mind is that from our testing, in most cases, the BCDZ 1250D will provide 40 amp continuous as at 25 uh, degree outside temperature without airflow laying flat on a heat dissipating metal bench. The charger reaches after around 30 minutes over 55 degree when it derates to 40 amp. However, from our test up to 65 degrees case temperature, the 40 amp were maintained for the full charge cycle. I still think one reason why this really hasn't been widely publicized before is that it didn't affect too many people. The most people, especially in the past, would have had a 100 to 125 amp hour battery in the car. And as long as your battery charger is matched correctly to that battery, I don't think you would have really noticed the uh, boost charge limit. However, now with lithium, that really has changed. People put bigger and bigger battery banks and batteries in their cars, and the boost charge limit, especially for lithium, is just not uh, suitable for today's application. Albeit not perfect, I still reckon that the Red Arc DC-DC range is one of the best DC-DC chargers on the market. Let me quickly tell you why. It has the industry's highest temperature threshold. It operates at full charge up to 55 degrees and no other charger on the market, even the chargers with fans, can do that. The Red Arc BCDC range has a potted circuit board which makes it dust, water and vibration resistant. It has a small compact uh, form factor and it is suitable for under bonnet installation. However, it should be installed in a well ventilated spot, ideally right behind the grill. Red Arc is an Australian company and the Red Arc BC DC charger range is designed and manufactured in Australia. It has lithium low temp charge protection, it has a BMS wake up feature for lithium batteries. And the charger has a very low rest current of 0.8 milliamps. So all of these, I reckon, makes it still one of the best chargers on the market. However, there are probably two things I would like to see changed. I would like to see the option of a custom charge profile um, or the lithium profile voltage reduced to, say, 14.2 volt. It will not charge a lithium battery to 100% but around to 97-98%, uh, but I think uh, from my research it would be better for battery longevity, especially in high heat operations. I also would like to have Bluetooth functionality with a corresponding app where you actually could see the status of the charger, uh, which mode it currently is in, and maybe even uh, configure it that way. It would also be great to have an adjustable output current so you can match the current to the battery type. This would make it much easier if you change from AGM, for instance, to Live PO4 to maintain the same charger. But otherwise, I still have the Red Arc charger in my camper trailer. I have a BCDC 1250 going into my Hilux build, which is currently underway. And I don't really mind there if it's an old profile or the new profile because it will only have a 100 amp hour DCS lithium in the back. So the old two hour boost charge um, limit is fine for that. If you're in the market for Red Arc BCDC charger for a bigger lithium setup, I definitely would inquire with Red Arc and would ask to have the new charging profile with a four hour boost charge limit. As a final conclusion before I let you go, I think the only really disappointing thing for me is the lack of information available from Red Arc. Um, I really think that the limitations or the features, however you want to call it, should be clearly documented in the manual. Uh, I find it quite strange that it took me nearly a year of research to really get to the, hopefully, to the bottom of it. And yeah, I really would wish that Red Arc just uh, states how the charger operates in their manual and then everyone can make a decision whether it's suitable for him or not. So this is not the end though, because after filming the video and pretty much have it all ready, we thought we're going to do two more tests. So we tested my older BCDC 1250D as well as one of Joe's three-year-old BCDC 1250D, both with lithium setups. 
And interestingly, we could not uh, get any of these two chargers in a timeout mode. And um, if we look at the app, voltage here, yeah, 13.65, so it's still charging and it has not gone into absorption or float at all under the lithium profile and that is my old charger not the new test charger which is clearly because we did some things here it's not the new unit with a different uh, profile but it seems like this unit here also uh, has no boost charge limit both times the charger did not uh, switch off and switch from boost to absorption and float mode and we really couldn't explain it. So I sent another email to RedArc and asked why that would have been. And then RedArc came back and said that as long as the voltage is below 13.9 volt, it will actually not go out of boost charge mode. To be honest, I don't know why that information wasn't provided to me right from the beginning uh, because that really means that even the older BCDC chargers probably shouldn't have any issues charging lithium setups. That is quite different with AGM because in AGM boost charge mode you are easy over the 13.9 um, volt. However, with the lithium setup um, at 13.9 volt the lithium is pretty much full. Um, so there would be no issue and I guess that's why we couldn't really get um, the older BCDC chargers and I guess that's why we couldn't get any of the two older chargers to time out when charging lithium batteries. So I think from our tests even if you have an older uh, BCDC 1250D or 1240D and you're charging lithium battery banks or bigger lithium batteries I don't actually think you will see uh, the boost timeout limit come into effect and you will find it will charge your batteries till full without an issue because the boost charge time limit will only come into play if the voltage is above 13.9 volt. It is quite surprising that I only got that information in regards to the voltage um, Yeah, when asking now further because really if I would have known that from the beginning um, I think I would have saved a lot of time looking into this because yeah it seems like it is not a big issue for lithium batteries but if you have an older BCDC charger if you have a bigger lithium setup I'm keen to learn from your experience we cannot go into every scenario we cannot test everything so let me know what your experience is with it. And before we sign off for the day, I would like to give a big shout out to Joe from JS Auto Electrics. He is my trusted auto electrician for the past three years. He looks after my camper trailer. He looks after all of my cars and he has volunteered quite a bit of his time helping me uh, testing the charger, discussing the whole issue and really thinking a lot of the things through. So if you need a good auto electrician and you're in the Sydney area, I would highly recommend them and that is what I'm using. If you get value out of my videos it would be greatly appreciated if you could share, like, subscribe and maybe even consider becoming one of my Patreon supporters. With the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month you can really help me make these videos. You also have a few benefits, you get early access to my videos, you can ask me direct questions via the Patreon platform and from time to time I also give goodies and gear I'm testing away to my Patreon supporters. So, hope to see you along the tracks. So long.